Without a doubt, the simplest part of IGCSE computer science is parity checking and parity bits. Okay, all you need to understand to get this is the difference between even and odd. And that's why sometimes people make mistakes is because they think it's much more complicated than it is and it's actually extremely simple. Okay, so all parity checking is, is it's trying to figure out whether a problem has occurred in a data transmission or trying to prevent that problem. And later on, we'll look at how we can also use it to try and identify where the problem has occurred. So how it works is, let's say we've got a series of bits like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, we know that this represents the number 13 because we've got an eight, a four, and a one. However, let's say that we send this over to a second computer or a second device from one device to another, then several things can happen. Firstly, we can have something called bit flipping, where one of these becomes its opposite. Okay, so this one here, due to some sort of electrical problem in transmission, can become a zero. And then all of a sudden, we've got the number 12 instead of the number 13. Another thing that can happen is everything can change, which is called transposition. So instead of 1, 1, 0, 1, we could end up with 0, 0, 1, 0. And then instead of 13, we've got 2. So we've got a massive change. So one of the ways that we can prevent this, or at least detect whether that's happened or not, is we can use something called parity checking. How it works is, firstly, the computers which are sending and receiving decide on what sort of uh, parity they're going to use. They decide on either using odd parity checking or even parity checking. If we're using even parity checking, I'm just going to put an E to represent even, then what happens is, as well as the bits that we're sending across to the receiving computer, we send what's called a parity bit. I'll put it up here in this little box so that we know that it's not part of this. So if we're using even parity, all we do is we make sure there are an even number of ones. As we can see here, one, two, three, there's an odd number of ones. So our parity bit that we send along with it will be one. As I said, it's extremely simple. All we're doing is we're making sure if we're using even parity that all that the number of ones in the bit sequence is even. So we've got one, two, three, four, which is an even number. If we're using odd parity, let's say we're gonna try this with odd parity, I'll put over odd. Then we've got one, two, three ones. Because we've got three ones, we don't need to send another one as the parity bit, so we send a zero. This one here is called the parity bit. The entire process that it goes through is called the parity check. You must remember that this parity bit isn't counted in the representation of this number. This number remains as 13, whether that's a zero or a one, because otherwise, if we try to make it, if we included this number in the actual calculation of our digits, then it'd be impossible to use a one as a parity bit because we'd end up changing the actual number, okay? So the receiving computer obviously has to understand that along with this, we are going to send a parity bit, okay? So after that, we need to understand something called a parity block. In the IGCSE, it's actually called, it's called a parity block, but generally, if you're looking around the internet for it, it's called a, a two-dimensional parity check or a multi-dimensional parity check, right? The reason we need this is because if we go back to our previous example here, let's have a look at this number again here, right? Let's say we're gonna use odd parity, and therefore, our parity bit is going to be a zero. But what happens if both of these are accidentally changed in transmission? Oops, <laughs> I accidentally changed and I made it exactly the same. So if both of these are accidentally changed in the transmission, then you'll see that it still passes the parity check because we've still got an odd number of ones, okay? So if we have an even number of errors, so if we have two errors or four errors or six errors, eight and so on, it won't be detected by a parity check because if we, get, if we change two of these into zeros, then we've still got an odd number of ones. It works exactly the same as if we've got one, 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 and we're using even parity, okay? Then we've got one, two, three, four, five. We need to make it an even number, so our parity bit is a one. But if we accidentally change this one 
and this one in transmission to zeros, we the receiving computer doesn't detect it because we've still got one, two, three, four ones. And even parity, four is an even number, it's passed. But it's not because it's a completely different number than it was originally. So that's why we can use this. How it works is each one of these is a byte, okay? And along with our byte is sent a par the parity bits, okay? However, we also send parity bits this way. And what that does is it enables us, if there is an error, to figure out exactly where that error has come from. Let's just say that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six here. One, two, three, four, five, six here. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it all passes our even parity check. But what would happen if we changed this one here in transmission to a zero? Then all of a sudden we know that in this byte here, we've got one, two, three, four. Okay? Our four bits now, it doesn't pass the parity check. Okay. However, if I change this one here, we can see that it does pass the parity check because it's even parity, one, two, the parity bit is a zero, so we're okay. However, now because we're using this two-dimensional system, we're also checking downwards. With every block of um, bytes, we also send what's called a parity byte, which is made up entirely of parity bits, which means that we can now check it this way as well. So I can now see that one... Uh, well, okay, this one is wrong here, this one is wrong here, and therefore we know that two errors have occurred now, and not just one. This also enables us to, oops, this also enables us to see exactly where the error has occurred, something that we can't do with the previous version of just using one byte. In one byte, let's have a look here, let's say that we've got an error, okay, so this one here has, I keep doing that, uh, this one here has changed into a zero, okay? We now know that there's been an error. However, it doesn't really help the receiving computer other than asking for the entire thing to be resent because the receiving computer can't fix it on its own because it doesn't know where the error is. The error could be here, 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 or here. Or, of course, the parity bit could be wrong as well. With this example here, we can identify exactly where the error is. Let's just change any one of these here. Let's just change this one into, it's easier to change one to zero, so I'm gonna change that into a zero. Now if we go along, we can see that, um, okay, we've got one, two, three, okay, that's even parity, this one has an error. However, because we're also working vertically, we can go, okay, one, two, that's fine, one, two, three, four, that's fine, one, two, that's fine, four, that's fine, two, that's fine, two, that's fine, hold on a minute, this one isn't fine here. So we can see that this is the error in our vertical check. And if we look at the cross section of these, we find out that this one is where the error occurred. So now we can find out the exact place where the error occurred instead of just knowing that we've got an error. So that is really as simple as it is. And that's why I say it's so simple that people sometimes confuse it for being more complicated than it is and start making silly mistakes. All we're doing is we're checking the, uh, misspelled number there, we're checking the number of ones in the byte Okay, we agree to either have an even or odd number of ones. After that, we add either a one or a zero to make it even or odd. Okay, that's called our parity bit. We add a parity bit to make it either even or odd, depending on whether we're using even or odd parity. A limitation of that is that we can't see where the error occurred. And we also can't detect even number of errors. If we've got two errors or four errors, it stays even or odd, and therefore we can't detect them. However, we can use a parity block or what's called a two-dimensional parity check. If you're looking online for this, that's the more common name to help this. Okay, so that is all you need to know for parity checks.